I thought the best way of testing the new Axial Capra was to drive it off a 50 foot cliff. I actually did that. Welcome back to the Scale Builders Guild. Thanks again for watching. Today we are taking a first look, run, and review of the new Axial Capra. It is a purpose-built buggy designed for rock crawling specifically. Axial took a lot of design cues from the We Rock series of buggies. They are a smaller size buggy and it's designed for very technical rock crawling. A lot of folks thought when this first came out that it was just a scaled down bomber. This is nothing like the bomber. Yes, it is a caged tube style buggy, but that's where the similarities between the Capra and the bomber end. The Axial Capra is an all new kit from Axial and in my opinion actually goes back to the roots of Axial with the AX10 Scorpion, which was also built to be a bit of a rock crawler. It's really cool to see Axial kind of go full circle and take what they actually started this journey with and kind of reinvent it for a new generation. And while they go back to their vintage roots, I can say unequivocally that there is nothing vintage about this kit and everything that you see in it is all new. It's modeled after the We Rock series of buggies, uh, which are small, nimble, purpose-built trucks that lean more towards a competition style crawler. Because this is a kit, you will have to assemble it yourself. And there are a few things about the assembly that I did want to cover. The instructions themselves are very, very poor compared to previous Axial kits. There are a lot of misleading diagrams and some things that are just plain wrong that were really difficult to work through, especially for a beginner, I wouldn't find this super easy to put together. There is a revised online digital manual that you can download that corrects all of the previous errors and makes it a lot easier to put together. One other really nice thing to mention about the Axial Capra kit is that there are no parts trees. Every single part has already been separated from its plastic sprue, so there isn't any additional trimming or cutting or filing, and also because there's no additional parts trees or leftover bits, there's hardly anything remaining from the kit itself when you are done. It's actually really great to see, and Axial was definitely thinking about the end consumer when they put this kit together, because it's really nice to not have to throw away any additional bits and pieces, or just clog up your studio with a bunch of extra bits. I've got bins full of parts trees from previous builds because I was like, well, you never know when I'll need those bullhorns. It's... Let's get into some of the details of the build itself. This is Axial's first foray into a portal axle. And I'm actually very excited to see portals on a buggy of this style. They are definitely right at home on this type of truck. And if you have done any Google research on We Rock or the We Rock series, you will see a lot of these buggies do have portal axles. Uh, you want as much clearance as possible on a vehicle like this. And I'm really glad to see that Axial included them here. I think they've done their homework and I think that this is gonna stand up to a fair bit of abuse. They are Curry licensed F9 axles, so it's nice to see that they've been modeled after something that exists in the real world. Definitely, I think it's a good thing to have a few licensed partners. It always makes it feel a little more accurate. This portal axle is wider than the standard AR44 axle uh, by a substantial margin. It's actually closer and if not exact, to the XR10 axle, which came out many, many, many years ago. Uh, the wider stance is definitely leaning this truck more towards the competition end of things and less out of the scale kind of realm, but that performance is something you're definitely gonna want out of the Capra. It would have been great to see these portals in an AR44 width, just so you could put them under a couple of scale trucks out there that could really use them. The UMG10! Universals are installed in the front to help aid in steering, and you will get 45 degrees of steering angle. You can get even more by modifying the portal box, and actually, you can actually increase the amount of steering uh, dramatically by doing that. I haven't done it yet, but there are a few posts on the Axial Capra Facebook page that will give you some good insight into what you can do to modify this truck. Because this is a more performance-oriented truck, Axial decided to go with servo on axle instead of chassis mounted. 
I think it makes a lot of sense in this vehicle. CMS, while it's nice, you wouldn't find it on this type of truck in the real world anyway, so why not do something that's going to give you a performance boost? Axial did include a care package of electronics with this truck, but I decided to go with the Tekken T440 Servo, which I think is going to offer a substantial amount of performance. Axial also includes a new plastic servo horn, and you're saying, what's great about a plastic servo horn? Well, this one actually includes a couple of metal inserts that will likely lead to a lot less failures of those plastic servo horns. This is a really nice little feature, and it's something that I'm really excited to run and test and see how long it'll last because uh, durability is important in these kits and uh, you know the only way to test that is to drive it off cliffs. The plastics are all new to Axial but not all new to Horizon. Horizon has been using these plastic compounds in their low Z line of vehicles and those have been proven to be very durable over the years so I'm really excited to see that plastic make its way into the Axial line. It's definitely a huge improvement and I'm really glad to see that. One interesting note about the Capra kit is that there are no tires included. It shows Proline Hyrax tires on the box art but they are not included. So you will need to supply your own 1.9 size tires. I've opted to go with the Proline BF Goodrich Crawler TAs. While they may not be the most performance oriented tire, these are the Predator compound and I really like the tread pattern. I think it works really well for the environment in which I live. Uh, and uh, yeah, they just look super cool. I'm also running Crawler Innovation's dual stage Little Nova foams. Uh, I think they're the medium compound ones. Uh, they tend to work really well for me. One of the most notable features of the Capra is its all new transmission. This transmission offers a rear dig. And if you're not familiar with dig, dig is a system that lets you lock the rear axle sometimes also allow for freewheeling the rear axle but in the case of the capra it's best set up in my opinion as a two position either four wheel drive or locked rear and what that locked rear allows you to do is make an incredibly tight turning radius you can essentially turn it on itself and it will spin the whole truck right around because that locked axle is kind of forcing some friction and holding the truck back at the rear. And that comes into play in crawler competitions where you don't have a lot of space to sometimes turn around, you don't want to take a reverse, you can lock that rear dig, push yourself all the way around. It can be set up to be a three position so you can have four wheel drive, free wheel, and locked rear axle. You do have to make sure that you've got a transmitter that will allow for very fine EPA adjustment. I found it was just easier to set up as two position. You can set up as three so you can have that free wheel and free wheel will allow you to do a much better job of side hilling. And sometimes it's even better on a upward angle approach so you can just kind of pull yourself up over an obstacle instead of pushing yourself from the rear as well. That dig will require a second shifting specific servo. Axial recommends the Spectrum SPM SS X107 servo, which is a micro size servo, which includes a plastic piece that you will need to make the servo saver work on this dig transmission. It's a bit weird that they recommend a servo that has a piece you need uh, but if you aren't keen on getting that Spectrum Servo, you can order that plastic piece on a parts tree separately, uh, and it's not very expensive. I think it's like $4. That part number is AXI31009 if you'd prefer to use your own micro size servo for shifting. If you're not into dig and it's not something you think you're going to use, uh, I personally love Dig and I have it on a few trucks now. I've been using it for a long time on my Ripper. Uh, it's also on the Comanche behind me. Uh, it's on the Capra, obviously. But if Dig is not something that you're interested in and you don't want the added complication of another servo, you can run this transmission fully four-wheel drive all the time. It just requires a spacer. And that was actually one of the parts of the instructions that I found a little complicated. It said, if you want to use this spacer to lock it in four wheel drive all the time, then you should you do so. But the diagram showing the actual assembly of the transmission shows you using the spacer anyway. So it was a bit confusing. Anyway, they've cleared that up in the digital manual and I highly recommend that you download that. I'll make sure to put a link in the description below where you can get that. 
Axial also says that the dig can be operated on the fly, meaning that you can go from full four wheel drive to full locked or full freewheel as you're driving the truck. I haven't found it to work that well. It does kind of stick a little bit uh, and it's just easier to stop and shift your servo and then get on your way again. This transmission is geared pretty tall. Uh, despite the portals, there's not a ton of reduction overall. And I think it's somewhere in the 30 to one range, uh, meaning that it does go quite fast if you have a high powered motor. You can of course adjust the pinion and some people have had success running as low as a 10 tooth pinion. I think nine would be a little bit small. I don't think it would fit properly. The gear mesh would be off. I'm running an 11 tooth pinion and I find it have just enough wheel speed and a lot of low end as well, which is where I think this truck really should live. It's better as a slow crawler than it is ever going to be as a fast truck. Since this truck is so small and light, I didn't really feel it was necessary to go to brushless. I am completely leaving that up to you. You do what you want to do. It's your truck. But I like the low end of a 30 turn pro hand wound Tekken motor paired with a BXR ESC. It's a nice small package and it works really well on 3S when you combine it with a Castle BEC. I've set that BEC to six volts to protect that small micro shifting servo for the dig and the T440 actually does quite well on six volts. If you choose to go with a brushless system or a larger ESC, you will definitely find that space in there is at a premium. So I definitely recommend you try to lay out your electronics before you put everything together, as once the truck is together, it's not easy to get to those things. Axial shocks have never been that great. They do tend to leak a fair bit. I think it's really great to see an entirely new design shock from Axial. These are aluminum bodied. Uh, they have a cool bleeder cap on the top of the shock so you can actually do a much better job of filling them with oil and not overfilling them or underfilling them. They do include 35 weight oil to fill those shocks. I decided to go a little heavier and went 65 weight. They are 97 millimeters in total length so they are a bit longer than the standard axial shock that we're used to, which is around 90 millimeters. Because of that, this truck does sit fairly high. Thankfully, Axial also includes two sets of springs, a firm and a soft spring as well. So you can tune this out of the box without spending any more cash. I found that the soft springs actually worked a lot better and did bring that overall center of gravity down a little bit. The transmission skid also incorporates a boat side, so there is a very smooth underside to this truck. It does a really good job of sliding over obstacles. All of the links are six millimeter stainless steel and all feature new rod ends, uh, which is in a new plastic compound, which is a lot more robust than the previous generation of rod ends from Axial. Another welcomed upgrade is stainless steel balls for those rod ends as well. It's been a long time coming, but I'm really glad to see this as I think it means more great things from Axial in the future. Axial includes a set of plastic beadlocks. These are Raceline licensed beadlocks. And uh, while they look nice, I opted to go with some Vanquish Method 101s in the 1.9 size. Uh, added some scale hardware from Locked Up RC and I think they just look great. Also added VP stainless wheel weights on all four corners. Because this truck is so light and it has a higher center of gravity, I wanted to give it as much of a performance boost out of the box as I could. It's nice to have a bit of weight in all four corners. To run those wheel weights, I did have to extend them out a little bit. I'm running 475 hubs. There's also a LED light bar included. Uh, it's nice and bright but uh, I've chosen not to run it. I just don't really see the need to, I'm not gonna be running this truck much at night and I don't think you'd have a light bar on during the day. I mean, I wouldn't, but maybe somebody would. Instead, I'm running something from a friend of mine, Scale Built RC makes this Rollo meter and it is a functional tilt and roll display with warning light. It actually is really cool. It shows your actual angle of tilt and roll on the OLED display that I've mounted into the front of the truck. There is also a warning light in the back that goes from green to yellow to flashing red if you are in danger of rolling over. This truck can handle some pretty extreme angles so it isn't as accurate as I'd like 
but it is a very cool piece of tech and I'm happy to have it installed in this truck. I replaced the plastic helmets with these resin cast heads from James French. James is no longer making these unfortunately, uh, which is a real shame because they are highly detailed and look really good when painted. Um, I just wanted to add a bit more realism and I think that these really complete the look overall. The fuel cell on the back of the truck is a good place to put electronics if you are wiring it up in that way. That said, it is not a waterproof box and shouldn't be treated as one. You will have to waterproof that yourself if that's the way you're going. The hood is on a hinge uh, with two hidden body post mounts, uh, which is great. It's nice to not see any body pins sticking out. And this gives you full access to the battery tray. Uh, the battery tray has been criticized a number of times for not being large enough to hold a full 5,000 milliamp pack or any real standard sizes. There are some packs out there though. I'm running these Helios 1500 3S45C LiPo packs. They are a perfect size, fit in there really well, and give you tons of runtime. This truck is very durable, and one of the ways in which I inadvertently tested that durability was during some of my filming of the running video. I was out at my new favorite location, testing out some of the capper's abilities, and I managed to over crank it a little bit and reversed myself off a 50 foot cliff. Uh, you saw a little piece of that at the beginning. Here's the full bit of video and you can actually hear the truck hit things on its way down a couple of times. I was in a state of shock, obviously, after watching it do this uh, launch off the cliff. And I was a bit concerned that I wasn't even going to get it back. I wasn't sure if there was a way to get down into that ravine. I had to do a little bit of exploring. It took me 45 minutes to get down there safely to retrieve the truck and get it back up and see if I had actually caused any damage. And believe it or not, this is 100% accurate. The only things that happened, I popped one of the shocks off the ball mount on the rear axle and I also managed to stretch out one of the rod ends. Other than that, it's completely fine. There's no damage. The panels got pretty trashed, but there's nothing else wrong with the truck. I could not believe it. I filmed 90% of the running video after that accident and even with the damaged rod end it managed to hold up to a fair bit of abuse this truck took a beating and it came back for more i'm really really impressed i was mortified one with my horrible driving two that i had wrecked the truck five minutes into shooting the running video there's no better endorsement than that this truck will take it Ultimately, this is a very well-engineered buggy that reignites a class of truck that helped start Axial's popularity. It crawls exceedingly well at slow speeds, and with some light tuning, it can be even more capable than I'm showing in this video. It's right at home on the rocks, and that's where it really comes to life. This is not a trail truck, and certainly not comparable to one. They're different tools. Uh, and this one is a lot more focused towards the competitive rock crawling than say an SCX-10 II or any of its competitors. It was built to be on the rocks and I am really happy with it. Is it as scale accurate as it could be? Well, no, and that's not really the intention. It's more about performance in a good looking package. If you are at all interested in rock crawling and technical crawling and a more competitive aspect of RC crawling, then I highly recommend you take a look at the Axial Capra. If this is at all what Horizon has planned for Axial in terms of the durability, the quality of the components, and how everything fits together, then I think we're in for an excellent ride. I'm really looking forward to the future. Do I wish that it was geared a little bit lower? Absolutely. I think there's always room for improvement and there are a few things that I would definitely want to change. I think the caster on the front axle could be increased a little bit to give you a little more forward bite. The dig itself could be a little bit better engineered to allow for actual three positions set up a lot easier. Maybe it's just me, but I think it was way too difficult to find that sweet spot for freewheeling. 
Other than that, I think it's a real winner. It's nice to have an axial portal axle as well. It, raising up that center of gravity didn't affect this truck's performance too badly. And I think with shock tuning and uh, changing a few of the lengths of the, some of these links, I think it's going to be a real competitor out there. And I can see this igniting a whole new batch of people interested in RC. So there you have it. That's the full review of the Axial Capra. I'm really excited to have had an opportunity to play with this truck. I will definitely be playing with a lot more. Probably not as many cliffs in its future. Uh, but it's definitely going to get a fair bit of playtime. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to hit the like button, subscribe if you haven't already, and hit that notification bell so you get updates anytime there's a new video from the Scale Builders Guild. Thank you so much for watching. See you again soon.